Dr. Tata, we've heard some interesting things about living in the sun. What's it like for us at Earth? What does it mean for us on Earth to be living in the sun's weather zone? Well, the sun isn't a solid thing like the Earth. Uh -huh. It has an atmosphere, and that atmosphere extends all through our solar system. And the sun has violent events on it, like solar flares and coronal mass ejections, that eject a large amount of very high energy material out. Mm -hmm. And when they impact the Earth, they change our magnetosphere. And our magnetosphere then affects the upper layers of our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. They cause aurora. Mm -hmm. They cause uh, problems with surges in power lines. They change radio communications. And so there are a lot of things that impact our daily life. Perhaps the most consequential uh, now and in the future is the impact on GPS. Uh -huh. And we're moving to an era where airplanes will land automatically based on GPS. Mm -hmm. And so while it doesn't really make a lot of difference, uh, the, the GPS is off by 10 or 20 feet when you're going to the driveway of s some supermarket. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you're landing on an airplane, 10 or 20 feet can make a lot big difference. So there are lots of things that you just don't think about all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I don't hear a lot about it day to day about, about changes, but do people who do things like land airplanes, is that always in their mind? Are they always hearing about this from traffic controllers? and? Well, right now they're not because most airplanes aren't landed like this. Oh, okay. But the, the plan for the future is to have mm -hmm. more autonomous control of airplanes and not have to depend on traffic controllers and becomes mm. especially important as air traffic gets busier mm -hmm. and busier. Uh, so people who are looking at the systems of the future worry about this a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, we're a lot more affected by solar weather now than we ever were in history because we have such so much more infrastructure power lines and so on but it's going to be really important as time goes on and well yeah. for example a really big flare can take out a communication satellite okay and we were lucky about five years ago that there was a big flare uh -huh. that happened two days after the super bowl can you imagine what would have happened if we uh -huh. had a big flare and you couldn't see the Super Bowl? Uh-huh. Oh, heads would roll <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thinking about weather, you know, we think about weather a lot on Earth. That's mm -hmm. what we're familiar with. Um, is, that, is that a good term for describing what's happening, solar weather? Um, is it, is, does that describe what, we're, what we see? I think we use the term weather on Earth to describe the daily, weekly, monthly, yearly fluctuations in how our local environment changes. Uh -huh. And so in Colorado, it's getting to the late fall and early winter, and you're going to get snow. Uh -huh. uh, the same sort of thing happens on the sun. The cycle is longer. We have a solar cycle that lasts roughly 11 years, mm -hmm. and different things happen at the peak of the solar cycle than the minimum of the solar cycle. And so it's, it's like weather. It's a different time scale, uh -huh. but it, it's the same sort of thing. It's fluctuations in your environment over which you have you know, little or no control, right. but you really care about. Yeah, we can talk about it. <laughs> and you care about because uh -huh. you want yeah. to know whether today you know, you wear a sunsuit or a, right, right. a heavy coat and boots. Right. So, Dr. Title, earlier you showed uh, some images of a numerical simulation of a pair of sunspots that mm -hmm. were emerging. Mm -hmm. and we could watch that develop. How does that, how does technology allow you to do that now? Well, the 
sort of the basic physics is understood. Mm -hmm. However, it's very complicated. And so it takes a lot of computer power. Mm -hmm. So in order to have a volume that's as large enough to see a pair of sunspots, you have to have a big computational volume. Mm -hmm. And until recently, uh, you just couldn't do the calculation. This, mm -hmm. this calculation was done with 2 million CPU hours. Mm -hmm. That's essentially wow. 2 million hours operating on a single fast IBM PC. Uh -huh. In fact, there's a computer with you know, 10,000 CPUs on it. So you can get your 2 million CPU hours in a couple of months. And then once you have that calculation through the whole volume, you can play games with it. You can, you can colorize it whichever way you want mm -hmm. until you get something that both shows the phenomena that you're interested in mm -hmm. and is aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. so, and it was. It was aesthetically pleasing very much so. Yes, we worked very hard it on that. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's interesting. So, so, you know, I would normally think about a techn technological advance being that we sent up a new satellite or we could see something with higher resolution or something, but it's, re it's really an advance in being able to, in the computer technology, it, we, you had the underlying knowledge, the underlying physics that you needed to test through this computation. Is that correct? We had, through experience, understood what some of the basic physical phenomena uh -huh. are. We still don't know everything. Uh, the computate, in the technical terms, the computational grid that you need to use could be better. Uh, the volume could be better. Uh, but what it, it really does is it lets you look not only at the surface, but I showed in su subsequent movies, uh, what it looks like below the surface, something mm -hmm. that, that you can't see so readily. Mm -hmm. And, and so what you hope you can do is create a simulation that has some kind uh -huh. of volume in it that you can actually compare with observations okay. and then infer from that that the region that you can't see, the parameters that you mm -hmm. can't measure, actually are a correct approximation of what really happens. Okay. So that's the big exciting advance is to be able to look below the, the surface now and, and understand what's happening. Down yeah. There. yeah, I hope you think that you understand what's happening. Uh huh, and you'll find out. We hope that you will find out. <laughs> uh, well, Dr. Title, it's been a pleasure to speak with you and a pleasure to meet you here. And uh, thank you very much for answering these questions. Well, it's been a lot of yeah. fun, and I hope people get to see some of this data. Uh -huh. and get the excitement for themselves. Uh-huh. I totally agree.